Welcome back. Here we are at Dr. Drew Live, where our number is 888-373-9502. Let's talk to Peter. Peter, what's going on? Hey, Dr. Drew, I just wanted to tell you that I had a very brief flirtation with hard drugs at an older age. At the age of uh, 46, I was doing crystal meth. Wow, that's unusual. What, well, I was uh, lonely, and I'm here in Los Angeles. And if you're gay, you're going to find uh, crystal meth at some point. Since you know, uh, that's that's interesting. But I'm, I'm, so you're, listen, uh, do you mind talking about Prop 8 for a second? I would love to hear your thoughts on that, if you don't mind. Do, do you have any opinion about what just happened yesterday and what... What's well, going to happen? Um, I, I, I'm not the person to talk about uh, Prop 8. With, uh, I, I was going to call up, and uh, I have a beef with you about AA. About AA. Well, let's right, see so your history then. So you were, you were out here from where? From Boston. From Boston. Why'd you come out? Uh, I got offered a job out here in the movies. Like uh, performing or? Yeah. Cool. A little bit of that. So, But I didn't have many friends. So when I met, I met somebody... And uh, crystal meth, and then the whole thing. But and and so it was. It was now. It's common. Now I treat a lot of gay patients, and the crystal meth thing often goes with sort of sexual addiction and stuff. Oh yeah, that's all it is. You masturbate like a monkey for forty-eight yeah. hours so, in a row. So it was a sexual thing, and they maybe, maybe you're not an addict. Maybe uh, maybe this was all sort of part of some sort of problem at that time. Well, I don't believe in addiction like you do. From what I saw, I went to about 30, as soon as I got hooked on drugs, I mean, I'm rational enough to know that I shouldn't be on this. It's a very dangerous uh, drug. But one thing that I thought was worse than uh, being on the drug was being in AA. If you're in AA and you haven't done the 10-year party or the 15-year party, the 20-year party that they sit there and talk about, often brag about, you have no business sitting in those dark rooms. Sometimes I hear people with problems like mine yeah. on your show, and you immediately send them off to AA. AA is a detriment. First of all, out of all the AA places I've been to, uh, about 30 of them, they are all Christian organizations. Every one of them ends, some, some of them become ends with the Our Father. It is a Christian organization. When you, The whole concept of higher power is a Christian power. Otherwise, it, they would just be talking about you and your personal power. But that's one thing, but the the main thing that drives me crazy is when you say that alcoholism is a disease. Yeah, we we can show you where in the brain it happens. Actually, we actually show you in the genetic structture of the particular cells in the reward system where it happens. And it, it's it's You're a saying dis- that a gene has been located. What is what's the name of the gene? Well, there's two genes that have, there's actually three genes. One one is called the A1 allele. It was actually identified by a guy named Cummings. Uh, that one they were able to predict post mortem who had alcoholism by checking for that gene. Well, it turned out that gene did predict alcoholism. Alcoholism, but it also predicted a couple of other things like attention deficit disorder and other kinds of compulsive disorders. So that wasn't a specific gene. So then what happened was a guy named Mark Shuckett was doing studies on sons of alcoholic fathers to try to predict if he could find features that helped them predict which of the sons were going to be alcoholics. And he found there was one feature that stood out, which was resistance to intoxication, that the sons of alcoholic fathers who were resistant to intoxication had a very, very high probability of becoming alcoholics themselves. So then he went into the animal system and asked the question, well, are there, are there animal models like this where animals are resistant to alcohol intoxication? And yes, there are. In fact, he was able to take it all the way down to the fruit fly. He found that fruit fly, other researchers actually found this, that there are, there are genes in the fruit fly that actually resist intoxication. They actually invented a chamber called the inebriometer, where they put the fruit flies in and put alcohol vapors in. Some alcohol, some, some flies immediately fall to the bottom. They had a specific gene. They, they called that gene cheap date. And others had re- extreme resistance. And the most resistant, they started working on the genes. They found two genes. They then translated to animals, and then they translated to the humans. And the genes were one was a single amino acid substitution in the GABA-A receptor, a proline serine substitution in the GABA-A receptor. And that conferred about a 60% probability of developing alcoholism. There, another was the so-called LL allele of the serotonin transporter. That conferred about a 50-60% probability of alcoholism. Then they went to the the population of young males that they had that were likely to be alcoholics, and they looked at their genetics, and they found out of 250 of these kids, these boys, about 15 of them had both genes. They had 
a 100% probability of becoming alcoholic, regardless of the environment in which they were raised. So, now, how so many there, other diseases come from outside the body. I mean, alcohol is a man-made structure that doesn't have anything to do. With cancer, the cancer is spontaneous. Tay Sachs is spontaneous. Hollywood and Spots is spontaneous. These are all spontaneous. Most diseases are spontaneous. Infectious diseases satisfy Koch's postulates, and you can take an agent and cause it. But that's a that's a certain kind of disease. Most diseases are genetically based, with some environmental hit. Oftentimes, some are purely genetic. 888-373-9502. Thanks, Peter. I'll keep talking about this. It's an interesting conversation. More, certainly one I'm willing to entertain, but I have to take a break, and I have to go to Trey Ellis when we get back. More Dr. Drew Live after this. <laughs> 